The Amazon rainforest is one of our planet's most breathtaking ecosystems. It's home to countless incredible species, supports communities in and around the forest, and regulates the climate of the entire planet. But this unique environment is under threat like never before. Whether from the rapid changes to the climate or ever increasing deforestation, and we're already seeing the devastating impacts from these changes. So what future will we choose? Is it possible that we'll push the Amazon so far that it reaches a tipping point where it can no longer function as a rainforest? Or could we find a way to not only protect the rainforest, but to strengthen the entire region for the planet and for all the people that live here? I'm Adam, a climate scientist with a PhD from Oxford, sharing what you need to know about climate change. And today I want to share with you the lessons of two landmark studies on the future of the Amazon rainforest. One is a stark warning, the other a picture of possibility. Before we talk about the future, let's talk about the present, and in particular how unreasonably incredible the Amazon rainforest is. The Amazon rainforest, on its own, holds more than 10% of Earth's land-based biodiversity. Just a vast variety of organisms and ecosystems exist within this immense forest. And the rainforest also supports us humans. It's home to more than 40 million people, including more than 300 indigenous ethnicities. The Amazon also has profound impacts on the surrounding regions, providing rains and moisture, supporting the environment and the economy across South America. Okay, but maybe you don't live in South America and maybe you're thinking, okay, apart from being home to immense biodiversity, a huge number of indigenous people and supporting the climate of the entire region, what has that Amazon ever done for us? And the answer is a lot. The rainforest stores vast amounts of carbon, equivalent to up to 20 years of global CO2 emissions. Plus, the water cycle of the rainforest has a cooling effect that helps stabilize the entire planet's climate. So, all in all, that's a pretty nice rainforest we've got there. Shame if something were to heavily impact its ability to function. Yeah, well, surprise, surprise, that's exactly what's happening. Except it's not something, it's several things. Firstly, we've got climate change. The region has been heating dramatically and the water cycle has been shifting, some areas becoming drier and others wetter. And we're seeing the consequences of these shifts on extreme weather. Last year brought devastating drought to the Amazon River Basin, which climate change made 30 times more likely. But it's not just shifting weather patterns that's shifting the Amazon's ability to cope. The rainforest has been under ever-growing threat from deforestation, as land is cleared for everything from farming to mining. With something as vast as the Amazon, it's hard to visualize how these activities can cause a dent. But the reality is they've already knocked huge craters into the Amazon. 17% of the rainforest has already been lost, and 17% again is degraded. And both these forces, deforestation and climate change, have put the rainforest under unprecedented threat of fires, which have raged even in untouched regions. All of these assaults on the Amazon are having profound impacts. The rainforest used to act as a carbon sink, of all absorbing and storing carbon. But a couple of years ago, researchers published findings that it had switched, now acting overall as a source of carbon, adding to the atmosphere's greenhouse gases, amplifying the heating to the planet. We've seen as well that the forest is becoming less hardy over time, raising fears that it could be approaching a tipping point. Tipping points are states of our climate which, once passed, could see dramatic changes take place very quickly. And, crucially, these changes would be very difficult to reverse. For the Amazon, crossing a tipping point like this could see long-term significant changes to the whole rainforest, leading to large amounts of the Amazon dying back, shifting the ecosystem into a permanent dry savanna. So it's crucial we understand the risks that the Amazon faces. 
And now a study has investigated what the future might hold for the rainforest by looking at the interplay between the threats that Amazon is facing. It brings in evidence from the recent past, the deep history of the region, as well as computer simulations to understand what could happen next. The study finds that anywhere between 10 and 47% of the rainforest could face multiple disturbances by 2050. So within just 25 years time, it's possible almost half of the Amazon will be seriously threatened. This could cause threatened regions of the rainforest to transition to one of three possible futures. One would see regions still functioning as forests, but with degraded diversity. Another future would mean regions hit time and time again by fire transition to a degraded open canopy. And finally, regions could become a white sand savanna where it would be particularly difficult for these areas to transition back to rainforest. And the more areas of the Amazon that transition away from rainforest due to these stresses, the greater the risk that the whole ecosystem could collapse. But this fate isn't sealed. The study emphasizes that we can, in fact we must, act to protect the Amazon. This means action at the global and the regional levels. On the global level, and you're going to be shocked to hear me say this because I've literally never said it before, we need to halt global warming, which means halting burning fossil fuels. And on the regional level, this means not only acting to end deforestation, but actively restoring forests in areas that have already been degraded. But despite what's at stake, reversing the deforestation is often treated as a trade-off. There's this perception that stopping deforestation could harm the local economy, where many people, desperate for income, can't make ends meet otherwise. But does curbing deforestation really mean curbing the local economy? Well, a new study says no, but it also says lots of other things, some of which I'm now going to say to you. This is a study from World Resources Institute Brazil in partnership with research institutions from across the country. The study investigates potential economic futures for the Amazon in Brazil. On one extreme, the study imagines that Brazil fails to put in place restrictions on deforestation or on transitioning to low carbon energy. If this sounds needlessly pessimistic, the study points out that this is simply following the trend of the last decade. Although thankfully this trend does seem to be coming to an end under Brazil's new leadership. On the other extreme is the scenario the study calls the new economy for the Brazilian Amazon. This scenario details major yet achievable transformations. Zero deforestation, stop chopping down trees. Expanding forest restoration, start growing more trees. Decarbonizing Brazil's energy mix, move away from fossil fuels to low carbon energy sources. Adopting low emissions agriculture and livestock practices, which are more productive with less land and kinder to soils. And finally, but crucially, expanding the Amazon's bioeconomy to produce goods like rubber, cocoa and nuts without disrupting the complex balance of the forest. The study finds that the new economy for the Brazilian Amazon would have profound impacts for the environment. Compared to the reference scenario, the country would see 81 million more hectares of standing forests. Now, I can never remember what a hectare is, but 81 million of them would mean extra forest about the size of Germany and France combined. Plus, this future would see Brazil reduce its emissions by 94%, in line with the Paris Climate Agreement and limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees C. Okay, but kinda of course, right? It's not exactly surprising that the scenario designed to be good for the environment is, well, good for the environment. What's more surprising is that this isn't a trade-off. This scenario sees huge benefits to the economy too, whether that's the creation of hundreds of thousands of jobs or reduced inequality. 
plus for GDP, this classic metric of a country's economic activity, the country would see growth in all major sectors, including agriculture, livestock production, and mining, as well as, of course, the bioeconomy. Now, I know what you're thinking. Doing all this can't come for free. And, well, you're right. Despite the benefits, there are major upfront costs to achieving this future, but these costs could be paid for. For example, by scrapping subsidies on fossil fuels and by creating the financial framework to push money towards climate-friendly projects. All in all then, this study makes clear that protecting the rainforest and fighting climate change doesn't mean sacrificing development. It can go hand in hand with building the Brazilian economy. As the executive director of World Resources Institute Brazil puts it, this could be the greatest opportunity for economic and social development in the country's contemporary history. Looking at these two studies of the Amazon side by side, it highlights just how extremely we've been dismantling one of the most unique and valuable parts of our planet. Whether that's through catastrophic climate change or the devastation of deforestation. And the threat of this dazzling ecosystem collapsing, ceasing to function in the same way as a rainforest, has never been more real. But at the same time, these studies lay out just how much we can still do. History teaches us that action can indeed curb deforestation. And even though with climate change we can often get stuck in a pattern of thinking that it's simply too late for action, when we look at the Amazon we see that everything is still to play for. And protecting the Amazon does so much more than just protect our climate. It protects magnificent biodiversity, a huge number of indigenous peoples, and builds the economy of the region, providing hundreds of thousands of jobs. And this is a story we see time and time again, that fighting climate change doesn't stop at fighting climate change. And in fact, a study on the UK found that getting to net zero is a no-brainer, even if the rest of the world doesn't bother. Find out why over here. Okay, until next time. Bye. Hand in hand with Bazil. Bazil. Bazilding the. Bazil building. A